Hello, Bearded Bee People. Welcome back to B&K Bees for another episode of our beekeeping crash course. Uh, this one should be a relatively short one, but we're going to talk about seasonal hive management and a few key things to keep in mind during each season uh, as a beekeeper. So, I will here talk about spring for both an overwintered hive and a brand new hive, whether it uh, be a nuke or a package. Um, for overwintered hives in the spring, right after the thaw and after the temperatures start to rise and the you know bees start to fly during the middle of the day, you're going to want to start to feed syrup. Um, you're going to see maples and willows and stuff start to bloom and the bees are going to start to bring back brightly colored pollen and that's an exciting time for sure but that does not mean that they have syrup or sugar. Uh, protein is not sugar and it does not sustain a whole colony uh, in any way. So it's the, the second that that sugar runs out, especially if it's cold, is the second that that colony is susceptible to starvation. So get some syrup out there and feed. Um, and then when the temperatures are done freezing entirely and you can get in and start removing uh, frames, at that time, the idea is to either condense or reverse, uh, if it's a uh, double or, or taller. Um, and what I mean by that is, throughout the winter, bees die off and drop to the bottom, and the bee cluster uh, migrates throughout the hive, moving their way up. Uh, so at the end of the winter, most colonies are toward the top of the hive, and if it's a double, that can mean that the bottom box is entirely empty. If it is, in fact, entirely empty at this time, uh, when the temperatures are done freezing, you can take that bottom box and put it right on the top. Now, be mindful of the fact that it doesn't have any brood on the top of it, because if the brood just slightly dips down into the bottom box, when you bring it up to the top, you're going to create a big space in between the brood areas, and that top portion of brood is going to get chilled, and there's tons of problems that come with chilled brood, so definitely avoid that. Uh, but if they don't have anything in the bottom box at that time, you can reverse it. Uh, if they do have something there, or if it's just not a great idea to put an entirely empty box up on top of the hive, maybe they're really, really diminished, only a few frames of bees, you can take that bottom box entirely off, and that will allow for that smaller cluster to have a better ability to defend, and have a better ability to maintain heat and grow in kind of a, a more efficient manner. So, um, after you're doing all of that and you're still continuing to feed, now the bees have some space to move into or they're into a proper sized hive, um, you're going to add space as necessary because the bees are going to do everything they can to balloon, to, to explode in population. Um, and you need to make certain that they have that space to grow into. If they don't, they are going to send out a swarm earlier rather than later. So just be mindful of that and be prepared to add space as necessary. Now for brand new hives, especially packages, the name of the game in spring is feed, feed, feed. Even if you have nothing but drawn comb that those bees are going into, they don't have anything stored, they don't have a brood nest built, they need that food. So keep the food on them, don't let it go dry at all. Feed until either the nectar starts flowing or until the brood nest is entirely built out. <clears throat> all right, and then just because the year is young doesn't mean that the mite counts aren't high, especially in colonies that just barely made it throughout the winter. If a colony just barely made it, maybe it started off as a massive colony and then it came out as three frames of bees, that colony of three frames of bees likely has a very high mite load. And why I say that is, firstly, large colonies tend to have higher mite loads, and so if that, high, if that colony went into winter as a large colony, there's probably a ton of mites there. If they then died out largely and were shrunk to three total frames of bees, the majority of those mites didn't die, they just hopped on to new bees. And so as those bees die, that mite to bee ratio rises. And in some cases, in March and early April, you can see just a horrible, horrible mite infestation. So be mindful uh, of that and check and start checking as soon as you can dig into those brood nests 
every single month. Perform an alcohol might wash every single month so that it doesn't get out of control or surprise you at all. All right, so now for summer, uh, the general concept is adding honey space as necessary. Uh, now, in addition to that, you have to be mindful of the fact that the brood area needs to be kept free of honey or largely free of honey. Um, now, the bees move honey around really readily, so don't get worried because you saw a little patch of some nectar on a brood frame. Um, you know, they probably brought it in and put it into the first convenient location and other nurse bees are going to distribute that to a proper spot in the hive at a later time. So we run a lot of singles throughout the honey portion of the year and as long as we keep empty space right up above the single brood area, they'll move that honey right up to it and keep the brood area completely free of honey. But if you do start to see backfilled frames in your honey area or in your brood area, uh, you have to remove those and you have to replace them with drawn frames for that queen to lay. So if you don't have drawn frames, this can be a difficult time period. Uh, but as, it, as we're talking about summer and the temperatures aren't going to get cold, err on the space of more rather than less in terms of space. Uh, because the more space they have, the more other places they'll have to put honey uh, rather than in the queen's way. So as the bees hit the peak population at some point in the midsummer, uh, the mite population is really just starting to get out of control if we've not done anything to mitigate it so far. Uh, so once again, uh, check every single month, treat anything over a 2% mite load, um, and just be really, really well aware of it during this time period because a colony that could look nothing but healthy in May and June and early July can have an out of control mite load by mid-August and be completely dead by the beginning of October if no actions are taken. So don't take what you saw last month as a sign that they're healthy because stuff can get out of hand very quickly, especially when the, or when the bee populations are so high. So check every single month, treat over 2% mite load um, and pull those honey frames out of your brood area. It can help for your bees heat maintenance and regulation and as well as uh, dehydrating honey to prop your telescoping cover up on top of the hive uh, to kind of create a little bit more ventilation area. Um, so what I mean by that is just pick up the, the cover, move it forward a little bit to where it's sitting right on top of the inner cover uh, rather than sitting down and covering all four sides of the box. So that'll give them a little bit more ventilation and allow for them to dehydrate the honey into the proper moisture level a little bit easier uh, so that can be something that's worthwhile doing. So pull honey as it gets capped, um, as it gets largely capped anyway. Don't wait for a whole box if you're just running a few hives. Pull them as they get capped, extract them and put them right back on your hives. Those wet frames are going to get filled much much quicker than those dry ones and uh, it will greatly, greatly increase your honey uh, take for each hive. So pull them as they get capped and put them right back on the hive after you extract them. <clears throat> Finish splitting by the end of July. Once again, you can get split happy and do late splits. And I know a lot of people who successfully overwinter nukes, but since you're probably a beginner because you're watching this video, I really, really highly suggest you finish splitting by mid or late July. Uh, that'll give you enough time to feed those splits up to a proper weight and a lot, uh, give that split enough time to build up the population to a good winter cluster size. Uh, and it'll prevent you from having any crazy run around light hive situations. And then uh, my target date for making certain that the mites are in check here in West Michigan is August 15th. The reason that I say that is uh, after that period, every egg that is laid is supposed to develop into a winter bee. Uh, these are biologically different bees. These are bees with enlarged fat bodies that have the ability for these bees to dispense and consume nutrients throughout the dead of winter. So we need these bees to develop very healthily. We need them to be healthy and vigorous and to develop in a mite-free environment. So before August 15th, my advice to you is to make certain that your mite load is below 2%.
All right, and then lastly for the summer, pull all of your honey boxes off before the end of August. This will allow for the goldenrod float. Once again, we're in Michigan, so adjust depending on where you're at in comparison to Michigan, but I pull my honey boxes off before the end of August so that all of the goldenrod flow can contribute to winter weight. Um, and when I say goldenrod flow, I mean our fall nectar flow here in Michigan and in most parts of the country uh, that is consistent mostly of goldenrod flowers. Uh, it's a gross honey, it smells like socks. I don't care for it and there's a lot of it at the right time of year. So what I do is I pull all of the honey boxes off and I make sure that everything's down to their brood nest size before the end of August so that all of that goldenrod honey can go right into the brood nest and make that hive heavy for winter. If you do want to extract some of that goldenrod honey, uh, then keep your honey boxes on, but be prepared to feed even more in uh, September and October. Okay, and then for the fall, the fall is an important time for our bees. We need to pull all of our honey boxes off and make sure that they're down to their brood nest size, and then we need to feed. Uh, a lot of them should be largely heavy uh, at this time already, but if they're not, definitely put a hillbilly hive top feeder on them or some type of hive top feeder where you can dump a bunch of thick syrup on them. Uh, at the very minimum, I need 90 pounds, and sometimes you need 150 pounds of honey to go through a winter. But for a single, a single 10 frame box, I need that to be 90 pounds heavy uh, with honey. And if they're not, then I need to feed, feed, feed. So definitely, you know, spend money on sugar, get it done before the end of September because we do not know what October will bring us weather-wise and how much syrup we're gonna end up being able to get into those hives at that time. So feed that heavy, thick syrup and make sure that they take a lot of it because you need a very heavy hive to get through a long winter. Okay, so tensions are high in the fall uh, as we have a lot of bees in our hives and there's nothing blooming and there's a, just a lot of tension. So there's robbing and the bees are just angrier. So it is a good idea to reduce your entrance sizes on your smaller hives during the fall so that they don't get robbed out by local larger hives. Um, pay attention for signs of robbing. Signs of robbing include flying around the lid or really flying anywhere at the hive that isn't the entrance uh, because the bees understand that the hive itself is the one, they're ones that are using the entrance and they're likely to get kicked out if they try to go in there. So they'll look for other entrances into a hive. So if you see a million bees flying at the cover or trying to get in a crack, uh, that is a threat of robbing. It doesn't mean your colony is actively being robbed, but it means that if there is an ability to get robbed, then it is gonna happen. So be mindful because a large colony can destroy a small colony in September very quickly via robbing. Um, so once again, if you're worried about that, reduce your entrance sizes at least on your smaller colonies. All right, and then make sure your colonies have upper entrances if you're in a northern climate. Upper entrances are essential for surviving a winter, especially if you keep colonies on the ground like I do a lot of the time. Uh, they need to have the ability to fly out even if the bottom is encrusted with ice or clogged with dead bees. So install your upper entrances, well, ideally in the spring or in the summer, but definitely before the end of the fall so that they can have the ability to propolize it all together so that they're not getting crazy drafts running through the colony during the winter. All right, and then if you've done everything, uh, if you followed all of my advice and, and watched all my videos and all that, then in the winter, you really shouldn't have to do anything for your bees. You made sure that they were happy, heavy, and healthy. And what I mean by happy is that they don't have any large cracks and they're in a nice sunlit spot of a yard and they've got a nice windbreak. And when I say heavy, I mean that they're at least 90 pounds of honey or more if they're larger than a single. And when I say healthy, I mean that all of the bees that go into winter were developed in a mite-free environment and a low disease level environment. If you hit all three of those H's, happy, heavy, and healthy, you really shouldn't have to do anything throughout the winter at all. Um, so yeah, I understand that you're going to want to get out there and knock on the hive and lift them up and all that. And, Feel free to do all that if you want to, uh, but in, in terms of emergency action or management or anything like that, there's really nothing that you should have to do. 
So toward the end of March, I do get around to lifting up the backs of hives to see if anything's light. If they are, I'll apply some dry sugar on the top. Uh, usually that means just pouring uh, granulated sugar on the inner cover or doing what's called the mountain camp method, which is putting paper over the tops of the frames and then just pouring sugar there. Uh, you can create a sugar brick, which is like a hard candy brick, um, or fondant. A lot of people feed fondant. But either way, dry sugar on a super light hive in late March. Don't get in there in January or February to try to do that because you're really not going to have a whole lot of success trying to sustain a large colony with dry sugar alone. So you should really only be doing that right at the end of winter or the beginning of spring. All right, so that is it. Uh, for seasonal hive management. As always, if you've got any questions or comments, leave them in the comment section below. I'll be happy to chat with you about it. Otherwise, thank you very much for watching. Up next, we're going to be talking about honey production and extraction. So get out there and have some fun with your bees. See ya.